What's going on guys? Today we have a very fun recipe in store. We're making a keto chicken casserole. So this is gonna be super, super velvety and cheesy, which is my personal favorite. And then we're gonna add in some beautiful veggies. We got some green spinach, some red onion, and we are gonna add in some mushroom as well. This will give it a lot of texture, a lot of taste. And basically it's just like a one skillet, one pot type of dish. Perfect for dinner, perfect for meal prep. But before we get started, this recipe calls for about a half a pound of bacon. And so you can either get like crumbled bacon that's already packaged and add that in. You can leave it out or you can do what we did. We actually cooked up half a pound of bacon right here in the oven for convenience. And then we're gonna let that cool and we'll crumble that when it's time to add it. So let's get started on our veggies. We're gonna dice up um, this red onion here. And you can use as little or as much as you want. Okay, that looks good. And then we are also going to chop up our mushrooms here. So also nice diced chunks. Okay, we've got all our veggies diced up. I'm tearing up, I apologize. We have a large skillet heating to medium heat and we have about a tablespoon of coconut oil in here and we are gonna get our veggies sauteed. Let's add in our onion and our mushrooms. So we're first gonna get this cooking down before we add in our spinach, because as you guys know, spinach cooks pretty quickly. All right, so the veggies are looking good and you can smell that mushroom sauteing, yum. So now we're just gonna add in our spinach. We're doing about five ounces of spinach here. All right, so our spinach has wilted down quite a bit, but it'll continue to wilt because we're gonna add the remainder of our ingredients and that's gonna create this nice creamy base for this chicken casserole. So we're gonna do half a cup of cream. Then we're gonna do four ounces of cream cheese. This is already room temperature, so this will melt down pretty quickly. Then we're gonna do one fourth cup of mayo. And the mayo we like to use when we're cooking for ourselves is this Primal Kitchen mayo. And really anything with the avocado oil or coconut oil base is gonna be your best bet. And most of the ones you'll find have like soybean oil, sunflower oil. So this is avocado oil mayo, one fourth cup. And you can tell this is gonna be very creamy. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, spicy brown mustard, whatever you want, just a little kick, some garlic, two to three cloves, some cheese, of course, because it'll be creamier. We're gonna do about half to three fourths cup. Let's give this a quick stir. Oh yeah, you can really smell that Dijon. Just a little bit goes a very long way. So we're gonna turn the heat down a little and as that cooks slightly, we're gonna cut up this bacon that we are gonna add right to the skillet. I like nice big chunks. Perfect. And then we're gonna top this off with our seasonings and our cooked chicken here. So let's add in our chicken. So as far as the chicken goes, you can, of course, cook your own at home, chop that up, nice bite-sized pieces, or if you wanna go a little convenient route, which is what we did, you can get um, a rotisserie chicken and just shred that up with your hands, get the meat off the bone, and that'll work really well also. For the final touch, this beautiful creamy chicken dish, we have our seasoning, so just salt, pepper, and we're gonna go with some Italian seasoning. Keep it simple. So about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon of pink salt, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. All right guys, so our casserole is basically done, but to finish it off, we're gonna pop this in the oven and we did it in a cast iron skillet that can go right into the oven, but if you didn't use one of those, you could transfer all of this to a nice big casserole dish and that'll just make the presentation even better. But before we pop it into our oven at 375 degrees, we're gonna top it with some more cheese. Why not? One of my favorite cheeses that melts down is mozzarella, of course. So we're gonna top it with some mozzarella. And then I've also reserved some bacon that I thought would look nice on top. So we can top it with the bacon. And then this is gonna go into the oven at 375 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes to get the cheese melted. Everything will meld together. And then at the very end, I'm gonna pop the broiler on for a couple minutes so the top cheese can get bubbly and brown. So we'll be back to check on this and taste test. So it was 15 minutes and I checked on it. It was super cheesy and melty. So I popped on the broiler and let's take a look. If you can't see, the edges are browning nicely. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna give it a couple more before we pull it out. Whoa, baby, look at that. It's beautiful, right? 
Mmm, and it smells so good. So ideally you'd let this cool because it's very hot, but I think I'm gonna scoop some out and we're gonna give it a try. Oh yeah. Well, if that isn't beautiful, I don't know what is. So that looks good. You can see the onion, you can see the spinach, the chicken, the bacon. I feel like we never learn. It's always too hot, isn't it? Oh my gosh. I forgot we put Italian seasoning in there. It tastes like pizza almost. I hate to say it, or I love to say it. Anyway, this is like a white pizza with a ton of delicious toppings. So you got the textures, you got the flavors going on, the creaminess. This is really, really good. I think this would be served great alongside maybe some fresh veggies. So like if you take this to work, this is a meal itself, but like maybe some nice crisp veggies on the side like carrots and celery, or you could take flackers, do some dip action. That would be really, really good. And linked below, you're gonna get the entire blog post with recipe, with instructions, with ingredients on how to make this. And maybe I'll toss in some swap ins and swap outs that I would do next time I make this. So check out that and let us know what you think. Tag us on Instagram, share the recipes you make. We'd love to see what you're doing. Thanks for watching us.